Hello guys, it's Shit Game Plays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. And for this video I bring you the comparison in between the PCI Express 3 and PCI Express 4 on the RX 7600 and this is important why? Because these cards like the recent 4060 and 4060 Ti like the 6600 XT, 6650 XT, 6600, 5500 XT and so on these cards only bring 8 lanes of PCI Express so even if you have the 16, uh, the 16 lanes PCI connector which is the normal PCI connection of the cards they only bring 8 8 physical lanes connected, meaning that you have half the bandwidth that you should with the full 16 times PCI lanes. And since the most recent cards are getting faster and the games are getting more demanding, I am testing once again with the 7600, like I told you before, to see if there's a big or small performance difference in between 16 games tested, okay? 16. Firstly, we'll have a small explanation of what is PCI Express and how it works and why does it have 8 lanes, some have 16 lanes and so on. And right after that, we go into our awesome benchmarks. Almost as awesome as today's sponsor. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mo, Bringing you all the software deals you need, like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2021 with a new Windows 11 design and even Windows Server 2022. For all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 25% off, getting a Windows 10 serial key for only $16. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. PCI Express means Peripheral Component Interconnect Express. It is a high-speed serial computer expansion bus standard that came to replace the older PCI, PCI-X and AGP bus standards. If you're older than 25 and you're into computers since a child or a teenager, you must remember the time where GPUs were running AGP slots instead of PCI Express ones. Or maybe you were just too busy watching Dragon Ball, which is also relatable. And nowadays lots of things use PCI Express like graphics cards, sound cards, wireless and Ethernet cards and even hard drives, like the recent NVMEs. PCI Express devices communicate via a logical connection called an interconnect or link, which is a point-to-point -point communication channel in between two PCI Express ports allowing both to receive ordinary PCI requests or interrupts. The lanes are physically on the hardware and they aren't something that you can add via software. And usually the slots are also different and serve a different purpose depending on the number of lanes they have. Nowadays the motherboards and CPUs use mostly 16 lanes or more of PCI Express 4 with some exceptions like the Ryzen APUs that have 8 lanes dedicated to the integrated graphics. And even if you disable those same integrated graphics, the lanes will still be solely used for that. And this since they are hardware wired that way so you won't be able to use more than the 8 lanes you have left when using a discrete GPU paired with those APUs. And like I told you before, the lanes are physical and that same applies to the graphics cards PCBs, which most times, especially on the higher tiers, are designed with 16 lanes independently of their PCI Express generation. Still, AMD went on a rampage to cut production costs back in 2019 and started decreasing the PCI lanes from 16 to 8 in some lower-end GPUs. And it all started with the RX 5500 XT, being followed by the RX 6600 series and now the RX 7600. I mean, even Nvidia followed that path and did the same to the RTX 3050 and now the RTX 4060 and 4060 Ti, just to cut some production costs. But well, in most cases the lower tier cards weren't powerful enough to stress all the bandwidth of the 8 lanes when running PCI Express 4 since the 8 lanes of PCI Express 4 have the same bandwidth as 16 lanes of PCI Express 3. But what happens if you are running a CPU that does not support PCI Express 4? Or what if your CPU does support PCI Express 4 but your motherboard doesn't and you're obligated to use the older version? Will the RX 7600's performance decrease much compared to PCI Express 4? In this case, we're testing solely both versions of PCI Express with the same motherboard and CPU to see how the new RX 7600 performs. Because in most scenarios, if your CPU does not support PCI Express 4, for example, you're most likely CPU bottlenecked before you can start being bottlenecked by the PCIe bandwidth. And that's exactly why I'm bringing the benchmarks with the same exact CPU and RAM but with different PCI versions chosen on BIOS. 
And well, the first game is the recently released Diablo 4 doing a running test around the city. At 1080p for example, PC Express 4 delivers us 30% more FPS in the 1% lows, going from 79 to 103, a massive smoothness increase, and even at 1440p and 4K, the differences are noticeable, with PCI Express 4 delivering 10% more average FPS. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla the difference is almost none, with a very mild average FPS increase at 1080p and a 5% average FPS increase at 1440p, although we have lower 1% low somehow. And at 4K we have once again the same results. In Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 the differences are also small but bigger than the ones in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, now presenting a mild 6 average FPS boost at 1080p, which translates to 6%, with the most important FPS boost being at 4K, where we go from 35 to 39 average FPS, which translates into an 11% FPS boost. Not bad. Moving to Rainbow Six Extraction, the results are quite interesting actually. At 1080p we have no gains in terms of averages, but since this game loves bandwidth, the increase happens in the 1% lows, with PCI Express 4 delivering 16% more FPS. At 1440p the 1% lows boost was not much, but now we do have an average FPS boost of 7 FPS, which translates into a 9% increase. And at 4K there are no differences with the results being all within the margin of error. Plague Tale Requiem actually surprised me, people say this game is unoptimized, but I really believe it is the opposite. As you can see, this game loses absolutely no performance by running this card in PCI Express 3 and even when using ultra textures, which are outstandingly good looking in this game. The VRAM usage is fairly low and stays below 8GB VRAM even at 1440p. Really impressive. And Cyberpunk 2077 seems to follow the flow, performing virtually the same on both PCIe versions, so you won't really need to worry much about how Cyberpunk will run there, unless of course you are using ray tracing, which will hardly happen with a GPU like this one. And now we have Forspoken and don't be afraid of these 1fps 1% 1 lows, as they are caused by the game loading other parts of the map for the benchmark, so this does not occur in real gameplay. You'll have a bigger stutter here and there of course while using PCI Express 3, but that's about all you're gonna have. And that happens since the game uses direct storage that needs a lot of PCIe bandwidth to work properly. And that's why we see some pretty big gains at all resolutions when using PCI Express 4, having 21% more FPS at 1080p, 22% more FPS at 1440p and 23% more FPS at 1440p ultra wide. Interesting. Moving to Microsoft Flight Simulator, we see almost no differences with a mild increase in the averages and 1% lows that could actually be considered margin of error, meaning that you most likely won't have any issues when using PCI Express 3 with an RX 7600 in this specific game of course. And well, Forza Horizon 5 was the only game that presented a performance difference in the previous two RDNA 2 GPUs that I tested, the RX 6600 XT and the RX 6500 XT. But with RDNA 3 it seems that the difference is very small when comparing PCI Express 3 to PCI Express 4, with it being only really noticeable at 4K, where you get a decrease from 55 to 45 FPS when using PCI Express 3. And Counter-Strike 2 is our next game tested and I know it isn't out yet, so take in consideration that the results might change a bit over time. These results are funny because we have higher averages with the PCI Express 4, but lower 1% lows. But maybe that's due to the shader loading process that wasn't entirely done when testing PCI Express 4, which might be the case since this game uses DirectX 11, meaning that the lower 1% lows with PCI Express 4 might actually be due to that. And God of War also likes bandwidth very much, and I was thinking that the biggest difference would be at higher resolutions, but it seems that's not the case, since the biggest difference we had was at 1080p with PCI Express 4 delivering considerably higher 1% lows. Besides that, the results were more or less of the same. Yeah. Moving to an Unreal Engine 5.2 game, we have Fortnite. As you can see this game also pushes a bit the bandwidth, because even though we're using high settings, we're also using Nanite Geometry and Lumen, which is basically Unreal Engine software ray tracing. And even there, 
the difference is rather small compared to the previous titles. Still, it is never bad to have more bandwidth. And in The Last of Us Part 1, I actually thought that the differences would be pretty noticeable, even more with the 8GB VRAM GPUs like the RX 7600, but it seems that after some optimizations, well, and since we're using high settings as well, that's not the case. Not even at 4K, which is actually pretty nice. Well done. But in Hogwarts Legacy, things are different with a very noticeable performance decrease when using PCI Express 3 versus PCI Express 4, with PCI Express 4 being in the 1% lows, 21% faster at 1080p, 20% faster at 1440p and 27% faster at 4K, with the averages difference also being pretty noticeable at 1440p and 4K. Definitely a game where you want to be running PCI Express 4. And in Resident Evil 4 I found an interesting scenario where using ultra textures with PCI Express 3 would make the game randomly crash basically like happens with the PCI Express 4 when running ray tracing as well at anything over 1080p. Meaning that at resolutions higher than 1080p, PCI Express 4 doesn't have enough bandwidth to refresh the textures even when not running any kind of ray tracing technology. So if you want to run this game with PCI Express 3 without crashing, you definitely need to reduce the texture quality. The final game tested is Spider-Man Remastered, a game that, like I say in all my GPU comparison videos, loves PCIe bandwidth. And here is your proof. At 1080p the performance difference is massive, going from 84.6 FPS with PCI Express 3 to 134.7 FPS with PCI Express 4, translating into a 59% performance difference. And that same performance difference translates to all resolutions where PCI Express 4 is massively superior. Thing that does not change when using ray tracing, if anything, gets worse. At 1080p, PCI Express 4 is 84% faster than PCI Express 3 in terms of average FPS and a whopping 140% faster in the 1% lows, basically 2.4 times faster. At 4K, for example, the difference is night and day, where we go from 9 average FPS with PCI Express 3 to 20.7 with PCI Express 4. Massive difference once again. So if you're going to play Spider-Man Remastered, make sure that you have a PCI Express 4, maybe a CPU or card, because if you only have 8 PCI lanes and PCI Express 3, you're gonna suffer a lot. And as for the 16 games average, it does not include Resident Evil 4 since the game would not run at higher than 1080p with PCI Express 3, but it does include Spider-Man Remastered using Ray Tracing. And well, on the average the performance difference stays at around the 9% mark, nonetheless some games are very sensitive to bandwidth and will run like crap with only 8 lanes of PCI Express 3. So even though the 16 games averages are okayish, let's say, the real world performance of PCI Express 4 will be much better. Even more in games to come, so make sure that you make the right decision when buying a new computer or upgrading your current one. All said and done, Let's move to the conclusion. And well guys, conclusion. As you see, it kind of seems that the PCI Express 3 does make the difference. Not in all games, because not all games are really using all that bandwidth, but in games that do the but in games that sorry do take advantage of that bandwidth, like for example Spider-Man, the performance difference is crazy big. It is crazy big, like that specific part that I tested Spider-Man, even without ray tracing, the performance decrease with PCI Express 3 was insane. While we were having over 130 average FPS with PCI Express 4, we were only having uh, 80 something FPS with PCI Express 3. Now, if you're running, for example, the RX 6700 or something that really has the full 16 PCIe lanes, uh, with PCI Express 3, you'll have the same PCIe bandwidth as eight lanes of PCI Express 4, meaning that you won't have any issues even if you are using uh, PCI Express 3. The only issue is most likely a CPU or a small CPU or RAM bottleneck, okay? But in terms of bandwidth, you're fine. Plague Tale Requiem using ultra textures, the game just looks gorgeous. And even then at 4K, it will be running completely fine even with PCI Express 3 in this card. So. It kind of depends on the game, but further further games, games that, that will 
that will uh, come now or come in the future, in the recent future, they will use a lot more PCIe bandwidth, even more games like Forspoken. The newer games will be more like Forspoken because they will most likely use uh, direct storage in order to have way faster load times and that needs a lot of PCIe bandwidth so meaning that if you don't have enough PCIe bandwidth what will happen is that you'll have stutters you'll have less FPS and so on so overall if you have a system that supports PCI Express 4 both on the motherboard and the CPU you can grab one of these cards without any issues but if one of your parts does not support PCI Express 4 and only PCI Express 3, like the CPU or the motherboard, or both, well, then I actually advise you to get one, one card like the, the RX 6700 non-XT that costs roughly the same, but at the same time you'll have no issues with PCIe bandwidth and overall you'll have a better card, with a bit less features, but overall a better card with more VRAM. Thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video because that really helps a lot. And well, not really much more to say, so see you in the next one, I guess. Not I guess, I'll see you in the next one.